Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I know that lunch can be a hard act to follow, but um, I'm going to do my best. I'll just quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ashley Samets. I've worked sort of on and off uh, within open source and tech for most of my life. It's either been law enforcement or tech. Um, and my mentor and, and former boss uh, used to work in law enforcement as well. And he had made a joke once. Um, about how the two jobs that we had done working in law enforcement and open source were actually very similar. Uh, and he suggested that I should do a talk on it one day. So thought about it and I did a little tweaking. It wasn't originally going to be biker gangs, um, but it is now because there was a lot more similarities between biker gangs and you folks than you think there are. So without further ado, we're just going to get into it. So. One of the reasons that I said, well, obviously, it's going to be closer related to biker gangs than any other form of, uh, of group criminality is because of the open road and open code analogy. Um, there's more similarities than I thought. And as I started working through this presentation, I really got a bit carried away with it and, and thought, holy smokes, these are basically the same people. Um, the most interesting thing that I found about working in open source, um, especially compared to other sort of sections of tech, was that there were unwritten rules. And these unwritten rules didn't generally get shared with people outside of the community, much like within outlaw motorcycle groups or OMGs or MCs, as I might refer to them. And the first rule of both groups so whether you're in boss or whether you're in an OMG is, of course, you're going to protect the community. Uh, safety and well-being are paramount in both communities. And this goes to whether you're patching code or you're pulling over to help a biker with mechanical issues. Um, and one of the things that I learned, learned when I was working in BEU, that stands for the Biker Enforcement Unit, was that if you are a biker in trouble, you pull over and you put your helmet on the ground behind your rear tire. And this is an international sign, globally recognized for biker needs a hand, or you know, if you're, you're a biker, you are obligated to pull over. So there's this decorum that sort of outlines how you're supposed to be responding. Um, and the interesting thing is, you're supposed to stick your hand up out the window, give a thumbs up or thumbs down. And if the biker says, yeah, thumbs up, you can continue. And if thumbs down, then you stop. And I can't count the number of times when working in OS where we'd be at a meeting or an event, just eat, sitting at lunch, for example, and someone would mention, I'm trying to figure something out. I'm trying to get this code to work, or I'm trying to get this PR action. And without fail, someone would say, Oh, I'll look into that, or I know a guy, or you know, I I know who to talk to about this. Or if you're trying to get your project some attention, well, tell us about it. Maybe we can we can get you some more attention. And it's always a we or an us situation. It's we will figure it out, or I will see if they can help us. And I love that about it. There was all of this camaraderie immediately. And similarly, it was thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up, great, thumbs down. Yeah, we'll help you out. The second part was the brotherhood. Now, we don't have jackets as cool as this in open source. And actually, you're not allowed to have a jacket with a three-piece patch on it unless it's been approved by the Hells Angels, which I'll get into later. But I think that it's time that we start you know, considering maybe some fancier swag. I know AWS is handing out patches at some events recently, but maybe we need to start with a jacket. Um, brotherhood is number two and it can also just reference community right you're looking out for the hang around if you're a biker or the noobs if you're an os you're taking care of the little guy there's support beyond the bike or beyond the binary right it's not just where you are at that time it's where else is this going to go i've never seen a community in person or online where People see each other so consistently and are so excited to see one another. And it really is like a big family. Um, and you know, if you've watched something like Sons of Anarchy or another poorly constructed biker show, 
um, that there's levels to it, right? There's a president, a vice president, treasurer, sergeant at arms, and these are actual roles and there's often a vote involved. These are very formalized processes within motorcycle clubs. Um, and as I was, you know, going through my list of folks that I knew in all of their roles, I was like, huh, well, we've got presidents of the ASF, we've got, you know, all of these presidents of PSF, and it's kind of like OMGs are different software foundations. You have all of these people taking on work and responsibilities that are in addition to their regular work, and it's often not paid or it's not paid very much. Um, and you probably complain about taking on this extra work for a little bit until you get surrounded by your people again. And you're like, right, this is why I'm doing it. Um, so that was another thought, thing that I thought was pretty, pretty interesting. And generally, there's a bit of a learning curve as well when you join these communities. You don't really know what OS is about until you're in OS. And much is the same for these motorcycle gangs. Um, a lot of interviews that I had seen or sat in on, a lot of folks are saying, I didn't know what I was getting into until it was too late. Um, and I'm assuming that's probably a sentiment about 80% of the people attending boss this week as well. Um, the support, I've worked in law enforcement, academia, finance, and tech, and I've been very spoiled by the employment gods, but I've never been as spoiled as I was working in the open source community. Um, everyone that I met through the role, not just specifically within that employer, but everyone through the role, there was so many people that worked for other organizations or other communities or you know other foundations, and everyone had so much time for me as I was asking to explain a project or a program or you know can you demo this? Um, and everyone in open source is really good at a lot of things, but everyone is also has this quiet assumption that you have to be really good at sharing all of those things you're good at, and so many people have shared with me. Um, and then lastly. The nicknames. Every guy who I profiled who was a biker had a nickname. There was always a Biff or a Whitey or a Junior in every single motorcycle game. I don't know why. I don't know how. And within the OS community, I've met several people that no one knows their real names and they just go by their nickname. I've checked into hotels with my old team and they were like, oh, do you know when Tom is checking in? And I was like, I have no idea who Tom is. I'm sorry. Um, and then I realized that they meant spot. And then I was able to go on with my day. But um, nicknames are also really fascinating to me because I see them in organized crime. Um, and it's generally a way of designating someone as ours within a community or a brotherhood. And as soon as I saw that this was something that happened uh, within OS, I was like, okay, this isn't just technology anymore. This is something different. Um, as well, you're recognizing this right now, sitting in a conference room in a country that you may or may not live in. The acknowledgement of shared experiences um, and different experiences, but under the same banner. And I saw this a lot within outlaw motorcycle groups, but not with other organized crime groups. You have groups that have similar ideologies or different street gangs across a province or a state, but the only things that were consistent with them were very shallow identities. With motorcycle gangs, there is a completely different level. There's a sponsorship between groups to get members from one country to another, to support each other. They put each other up in their homes, even if there's a language barrier. They help each other get jobs in certain industries. They vouch for one another in a way that most organized groups don't, except for within open source. The lingo the lingo these things still make me giggle to this day or there's inside jokes around lingo that um people outside of open source just won't get the read me's the prs the forks um free puppies free not free like beer i think that's one of my favorites uh in omg world we had cuts and tabs and hangarounds and prospects and when you start throwing these words um, around without thinking about them, I think that's when a lot of people realize that they're like, oh, I'm part of the fold now. I'm saying these things. I know what they mean. I don't have to ask questions. Um, we're work, you know, working in, in three word acronyms half of the time. And 
you know what's going on. And you hear someone else say one of these words from across the room and you're like, oh, that's my people over there. Rule number three is the need for speed, respectfully, of course. Um, we never want to think of ways to slow down a process or interrupt a process. So what are we doing? We're modifying. And this is one of the biggest commonalities that I saw between these two groups. Um, everyone's proud of what they're building, whether it be a Harley Davidson Iron 883, or if you're contributing to a README or trying to create, you know, the perfect TensorFlow tutorial, there's something about a DIY ethos that is very, very unique to these communities. And people can sometimes get frustrated or discouraged when things that were once within reach suddenly aren't available to them anymore. So they start going back and figuring out, okay, how am I going to make this work like it used to or the way that I liked it working for me? That's when you start your modifications, right? There's a couple of bikes called bobbers and choppers. And I know that there's a big fork joke in this picture somewhere. Um, but post World War II United States, the servicemen that came home and eventually ended up sort of starting the Hells Angels, they started removing all of the things from their bikes, from their motorcycles that they thought were too big or too heavy or not essential to the basic function of the motorcycle, like fenders and turn indicators and front brakes in some situations. And I'm sure some people have built tools the same way. Maybe we don't need these things. Let's take them off. These machines were lightened so they could improve their performance when they were racing. And basically what these individuals were doing, we're looking at an existing product and saying, these are the ways that I can change or further develop functions in it that are going to be more important to my end user experience. And then what do you do when you finish your creation? You show it off, of course, usually to other enthusiasts in your community. So for motorcycles, generally they would gather in large dry you know, lake basins in California. Um, but here we get together at conferences and events and online. Um, and we share those things. And often there's feedback, right? There's a feedback loop. We're getting people to do second checks, getting people to, you know, give suggestions or offerings. Um, and then what happens when the big manufacturers find out what we're doing? The same thing happened with motorcycle manufacturers. They started developing chopper influenced bikes but they weren't willing to go as far as foregoing things like rear suspensions and brakes. So you got something that was a bit in the middle. It looked like a chopper, it sounded like a chopper, but it didn't quite trust riders or maybe their brand reputation with something that they felt could lead to an injury or a lawsuit, right? So we had to play nice, but we wanted to share things too. Patches, of course, this is, this is a very easy analogy to make, right? Um, we know patches within software are very, very critical. And oftentimes people spend a lot of time on patches, uh, contributing to patches, things like this, but they're almost as integral to motorcycle clubs. So maybe a bug fix is a bit more important than putting on a tab that says OS forever, forever OS. But when I was investigating motorcycle clubs, the first thing I did when I saw photos of them or when I saw video of them was look at their jacket for your patches. And it's like wearing a GitHub on your back. How have you been involved? How many stars do you have? Who do you know? And I know that stars can be an arbitrary unit of measurement on GitHub, but still, we need to pay attention to it. Who within the community are you cool with? Who do you ride with? And it's kind of the same thing with OS patching. There's this theme of quality assurance that we're trying to achieve um, and when we're trying to reinforce that when we make something last, when we're making it reliable, and when we're learning from each other, right? We're trying to learn who's who within the community, you know, what everyone does, what they're good at, how we can help each other. When I was working at BlackBerry in the CERT as a communications manager, that's when Spectre and Meltdown hit. And seeing how everyone came together within OS environments, as well as major companies and cloud providers, 
they came together to try and problem solve and roll out these emergency patches. And online communities were huge in this regard. Not only were they keeping everyone up to date on what was happening or what was not happening, which is equally important, but the collaboration was really, really remarkable. Um, also, as someone who used to be in charge of the swag, I did not understand the importance of stickers until recently. Stickers are table stakes at conferences. And in doing these slides, I realized, oh my gosh, there are so many amazing sticker and booth designs that could have gone along with this theme. But it's incredible what something like a sticker does for a community. Working in law enforcement now, we trade patches. I work for a small service, so when I go on a conference or a course, I bring my services like shirt patches with me and we swap them. Um, and it's so similar that we see the same thing within open source and within these outlaw motorcycle gangs. Um, we don't have laptops to stick them on, unfortunately, but it's really neat that you could be sitting in a space with someone and you know they have an Oasis open or a FOSS life sticker on their machine, and then you end up being on their friends with them. And you know, traveling to these places, traveling to conferences, I'm sure that you look at backpacks of people that are on the same flight with you and say, I'm gonna buy myself a beer if that person ends up at FOSS. Next rule is know your limits. We all can get a little bit cocky sometimes. Maybe something worked perfectly last time, so you're certain it's going to work again, or you're in a rush to do the thing before someone else does it, or you skip over some of your usually rigorous testing procedures, and then we have heart bleed all over again. And one of the biggest, I don't want to say challenges or issues, but one of the biggest things that I saw working in OS was that there was not enough recognition and I don't think there ever will be for what the OS community does. And I think that's just because of the people that work in it. They're not working for recognition. Um, I truly hope that maintainers inherit the earth because they're responsible for keeping a lot of it going, or at least the frameworks for it. But because there isn't that over, this person is doing a lot from external sources, people can burn out quite quickly. And I know the personalities that find their way into open source, you need to be doing something always. And we often learn best by doing something. So you should be doing everything all the time. Um, and we don't often realize our own limits. And a tenant to good open source is ensuring it's sustainable. And we need to make sure that we are sustaining ourselves too, and the commitments that we're making are sustainable. Um, I got this really neat card. I don't know if you can see it. The front of it says, make sure to maintain thyself. When I was um, at an RIT, uh, Rochester Institute of Technology open source convention. And on the back, there's little stamps and you give yourself a stamp every time you say no to something. So once you've hit saying no to 10 things, then you get to treat yourself with something. But I thought that it was brilliant because these are the things that we rarely think about is the saying no, right? Evil Knieveling yourself over, you know, a dozen flaming school buses sounds really cool and makes for a great challenge point image, but there isn't a lot of respect for boundaries and individual capacity there, right? Evil Knievel had an entire team of people behind him so he could focus on just one thing. And even then, out of 275 jumps, he lands to 60 of them, meaning that even when things were perfect, the potential to crash was still there. So you have to make sure that you're taking care of yourself, knowing your limits, and knowing that you can slow down, things will get taken care of, and it's good to treat yourself. Because unlike a motorcycle, we can't just go for digging for parts if you burn out. The code of conduct, or how to deal with the one percenters. So <clears throat> one of the things that I adored about OS was there was an immediate code of conduct for each event that you went to and projects had codes of conduct on them. Everything that you worked on had this code of conduct, which allowed these places to be very transparent about what was expected of the participants. Within Outlaw motorcycle groups or MCs or OMGs, there's this notion that if you are within the group, you are going to be a law-abiding citizen. 
99% of motorcycle enthusiasts are law-abiding citizens. This was said by William Berry, the president of the American Motorcycle Association in 1960, which then leaves you with 1% of the biker or OS community that can be kind of a jerk or that doesn't always adhere to the code of conduct. Um, and even among that group of people that are not going to follow the code of conduct, usually they're reminded and then everything is fine. But sometimes there are things in a community that can make interactions uncomfortable. And just like the Hells Angels and the Outlaws, OS communities have developed this code of conduct that makes sure that everyone gets along. So we know that there is expected behavior, right? At FOSS, be authentic, collaborate. We know what's, un what's unacceptable, right? And we know that there has to be consequences for something. Um, it's interesting that when we're talking about collaboration before conflict as well, generally that's sort of a tenant. We saw this a lot within, not a lot, but we saw this several times within Outlaw Motorcycle Gang. Um, there was conflict between two groups, usually a very well identifiable group and a smaller group. And instead of having a, a fight between them over turf or membership, the smaller group just patched over, pardon the pun, patched over to the other gang who had better support, more clout, stronger, you know, membership. And then you have more support for your project or your illegal drug operation. And you have more people um, to go up for whoever is causing you trouble, right? You've got a, a larger power behind you. Um, we know that if there's con if there's un unacceptable language being used or dangerous situations, we report it. And I will say that I've seen people get banned from both OS communities and from motorcycle clubs. And frankly, the responses from both the career criminals and the career open source were very the same. There's denial, there's disbelief, there's shock. And then you change your name and try and weasel your way back in. But because of these tight knit communities within motorcycle clubs and OS, it's often someone within that group saying, no, this person doesn't belong here for this reason. And it's not gatekeeping. I think that it's far from that. It's this constant thought of the collective over the individual, which we'll get to in a moment. Also licensing and attribution. Obviously within open source, this is fairly commonplace. We need to know what we're using or building on. We need to know who we're giving credit to. Um, but did you know that the Hells Angels logo, the name, the three piece patch is all, all owned under Hells Angels Incorporated. And if you want to start a motorcycle club or an MC, then you need permission from Hells Angels Incorporated. So it's neat that you see these things. Um, and you're like, oh, that, that's interesting. All of a sudden, a group is a riding club, and then they become an MC, and that's own. They have to get permission, and then everything shifts. It's like when ZenSource was developed and then acquired by Citrix, right? There's Hypervisor itself, which is like a riding club, so anyone can do it. But then Zen Server is like the motorcycle club. Or maybe it's the other way around. Either way, things change, and you align yourself with the Hells Angels, and I'll just leave it at that. Respect or tolerance for other clubs, right? Um, when we say other clubs, we mean basically all the other languages. Not everyone's going to do it the same way, and that's okay, right? It's fairly certain that there's probably one or two people who hate one of the languages that I put up there um, or love one, and that's okay because you're allowed to do this the way you need to as long as you adhere to the previously mentioned codes of conduct. With outlaw motorcycle gangs, as long as you're not intentionally getting into trouble or intentionally getting into unsanctioned trouble, then generally you're all okay within the OMG community. And participating within the community is the biggest element of that, right? And that's something that took me a while to learn. But regardless of who you are, everyone has something to contribute to open source, which is one of the most compelling things about this community, right? Some people contribute code. Some people write the readme. Some people do the community management. Some folks champion the maintainers. Um, whatever it is, it's getting done by different people. And I think when people hear open source, they immediately jump into that's too technical for me, which I am very guilty of until I realized there was more than just code contributions. But within motorcycle clubs and riding clubs, it's similar. 
everyone has a role, even if they're not a sexy role, but much like open source, those less sexy roles need to be filled, right? Imagine a biker party without a bartender, security, the guy who takes down wall-to-wall -wall tarps to make sure their mom's carpet doesn't get ruined. I'm sure that there is a role specifically within OS that is just like that guy. Show up authentically. This is our second last rule. Um, and until you're part of the community, you probably don't understand it. And even when you're in it, there's probably going to be challenges and things that you can't quite figure out or parts of this community you may not feel like you understand. And that's cool because we always talk about it. I will say that most of the folks that I've investigated in OMGs and Outlaw Motorcycle Gangs all have their different reasons for joining. And I find it fascinating hearing about how people end up as a member within a club. And not everyone has the same reasons for being within that community and not everyone has the same goals and not everyone believes the same thing. But we are always sharing spaces, whether they be in person or online, on Slack, Discord, X. We understand that these spaces and these interactions are only possible because we're showing up as ourselves and have the space to do so. And I've met the most incredible people with the most incredible backgrounds and stories and lived experiences in so many countries around the planet. And it's because we're given this opportunity. I feel like open source is almost a sacred space because this is where we truly get to be ourselves. And with that exception of the 1% that can screw it up for, for people, it allows us to get and grow into versions of ourselves that otherwise we wouldn't have been able to without our club, so to speak. And lastly, whether it be the Hells Angels or whether it be open source, you cannot go back to your own life. I asked uh, my boss in the biker enforcement unit about some of the members that he saw in OMG. Um, and I said, you know, they haven't been around for a while. And I noticed we were doing some OSINT searches and I found a baby registry for one of these Hells Angels members and his old lady. And my boss said, oh, yeah, he'll probably step back for a little bit. And I said, is he is he going to leave now that he has a family? And then I got the impression that this wasn't something that happens no matter what you're in. There are two ways to leave a motorcycle club. You can be in good or sorry, out good or out bad. Um, and no one wants to be out bad. Usually that last one comes because you've done something really bad against the club or the member of the club and you've been exiled. Out good means you've left the club for legitimate reasons, so maybe the baby, for example, but no one actually ever leaves. People are out good, but they still show up to things that require a little less bandwidth than full membership. So charity rides and barbecues, and you know, you're probably still kicking in some dues. And I dare say the exact same thing happens within OS. I, I've been out good, I hope, out good since about the summer and I'm still kicking around. I'm explaining to the gentleman that I work with why they need to push updates to their mobile phones, and I'm working with other analysts, crime analysts, to develop OSBI tools that'll let us clean data faster than we can do it in Excel. Um, and generally, I don't think you ever look at software the same way again after you've had a bit of the OS Kool-Aid, right? And you just end up being an OS fanatic. Some of us are just more subtle about it than others and make it really digestible to the masses by wrapping it up in stuff like outlet motorcycle group comparisons. But for the most part, you never get out of this. And frankly, I don't think any of us really want to get out anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions from the audience? Yeah, please. There's no microphone, so you can speak up. So um, if I'm looking to switch from open source to motorcycle biker gangs, can you recommend a path for me to migrate <laughs> from, from one community to the other? Absolutely. They're a very welcoming group. So I would just suggest walking right after them and introducing yourself. That's what you know. I've, I've always seen people do. It goes really well for them. Cool. Thank <laughs> you. Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Um, I'll just add to what you said about um, respecting other communities, and you showed languages on the list. So yes, more um, um, more good words about JavaScript developers, because I think there's a lot of 
bad words about JavaScript developers out there. So yes, them as well, especially PHP developers as well. <laughs> I agree. I actually just saw it in uh, this month's Wired or last month's Wired how they were talking talking up quite positively JavaScript and how more people should give it the credit that that those developers deserve. So absolutely, kudos to JavaScript. I don't see any more questions in the uh, chat online. Still, any questions from the audience? Oh, there's one more oh, question. One from the a comment on the stickers because that's a topic I have been thinking a lot about. I'm an anthropologist. I'm like always interested in those symbols for group membership. And uh, what I noted is that um, stickers are not that easily accessible. Like for many of the really interesting ones, you need to know the right people even in open source and with all the sharing and global online community, you, know, you need to physically be at places with people to get certain stickers. And I found that fascinating that if people are in the know, they can see it on the back of the laptops, kind of where they have been, or at least where people they know really well have been. Absolutely. Like, yeah, like mine is still covered. Um, <laughs> and and <laughs> people look at it and you know, there's, it's crazy to see how much you can give up about yourself when people see the stickers on your laptop. And it's very much like the, the oh, you're in with these people. So you, you must know this person based on this sticker. And I agree. I find that fascinating, right? Like there, there's some things that are very niche and it's like, oh, I know that you got that sticker at, you know, open source 2017. It's, it's, uh, it builds that camaraderie even further. Like it, we are a, the open source community is a very sort of like almost secret society at times because there are things that only those within the community understand and i i really think that that's fantastic any more questions again thank you about thank you so much thank you